。咁多位同學大家好嚇，我見到大家都陸陸續續入緊嚟嘅。咁就誒、呃、都想講一講咧，呢、这、一個嘅講座咧，主要會係用英文做嗰個嘅介紹語言嘅，係啦。So so welcome to the、um, science festival talk, and today's subject is on bioresource management and sustainable agriculture. So today's talk will be on a theme, okay? So basically, we want to raise your awareness about the issues concerning food security. And also an importance of managing our resources. In particular, we'll we we'll also look at organic agriculture. Okay. So, so my name is Dr. Anna Liang. I'm the program director of our new program,、um, the BS BSc about resource and agricultural science, which I'll introduce to you a bit later on in this talk. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can ask me at the end. Okay. So first of all.、Uh, Let's see. What is your understanding of sustainability? Okay, so we're going to talk about sustainability throughout this,、uh, throughout this,、um, um, this talk. Okay, so what is your understanding about sustainability? Do you think your, the way that you're living, your lifestyle, is it sustainable?、Okay. The way that you go about your everyday life, do you protect the environment?、Okay. For example, when you have lunch today. Did you have a lots of packing packaging materials that need to throw away, or maybe you had some rice, okay, rice for lunch? Were you able to finish it all, or did you, or did you have too much and then you had to throw some of it away? Okay, so that is a, so rice is one of our bio resources.、Okay. And then also so we talk about we also want to look at COVID nineteen because there's lots of things that we can see, well, lots of challenges that this. This pandemic has has posed、okay, with regards to sustainability. So during this COVID nineteen outbreak, so it's already been about、uh, a year and a half. Do you have any revelations、okay, during this outbreak? So do you have any insights、okay, with regards to say sustainability or the way that you um, um, or say with regards to food security? Okay. okay so So do you remember? It was in February. So, so we had the the COVID nineteen outbreak in Wuhan. So that was in twenty nineteen around December. That's when we knew about it. And then what happened in Hong Kong? Okay, there was lots of、uh, people buying things. Okay, for example, if you went to Welcome, you went to Park and Shop. Lots of people were hoarding. Okay, hoarding things like toilet paper. Okay,、uh, tissue paper, and then on this picture, on this right, you can see that lots of people were buying face masks because,、uh, because due to limited supplies, it's very difficult to get face masks. And then when, when, when citizens announced or citizens announced that, that they had face masks available, state Watsons, we got huge queues, okay, of people lining up. Okay, so so this was during the pandemic. Okay, so people wanted to get a lot of the supplies. And there was lots of lots of shortage. Okay, so the COVID nineteen had disrupted the our supplies. Okay, so okay, so so those were were toilet paper. Okay,、um, like masks, also hand sanitizer. But how about food? Okay, so this did this happen to you when you went to 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 supermarkets and you see all these shelves? Okay, so they're empty of rice. Okay, so lots of people bought rice. Because people were afraid that there'd be a shortage of rice, and a lot of rice is being imported from elsewhere. Okay, so say from Thailand, some mainland China. Okay, um, um, so, so outside. Okay, so a lot of a lot of food is being imported from elsewhere. Okay, so so there's a big panic buying on rice, and then in this picture you can see a lot of the dim sum. Okay. Lots of dim sum packages, lots of these、uh, frozen foods. Okay, they were also all gone. And during the pandemic, because we had to work from home, lots of people also bought noodles. Okay, so they so they bought noodles so that they can easily cook at home.、Okay. So we can see that there's becoming a shortage of food. Okay, especially in in the supermarkets. Okay, because、uh, people were afraid. 
that we're not getting certain foods okay, imported from other places that they want to afford it. Okay? And also people were afraid to go out because if you go out, then you come into contact with other people. And we didn't know that much about the COVID-19 at that time. Okay? So people were very afraid and tried to, um, well, exercise social distancing. Okay, so, so what other, other things happen okay, during the COVID-19 um, period, okay? So besides all these supplies decreasing, so did you notice when you go to the supermarkets or go to wet markets that the price of vegetables increase, okay? So, so, so say, say vegetables like, like this, sometimes you go to wet market and it's very cheap, okay? So maybe, $10, $10 per catty and they increase, okay? So, so some of them increase by double, okay? But a lot of the foods had, had increased significantly, okay? Well, at least by 20 to 30%, okay? And why was the, why did food become more expensive, okay? okay. So a lot of these foods are also coming from elsewhere, okay, say from mainland China, and then there were restrictions on the border, on the border crossing. Okay, so do you remember this? <clears throat> so we, we have so we have cross-border truck drivers okay, from Hong Kong, and they have to go to across the border into mainland China to get the vegetables and bring it back to the wholesale markets in Hong Kong. So the mainland authorities they imposed those really strict um, requirements on, on these cross-border truck drivers. So first of all, they had to, the truck drivers had to get these a COVID test, make sure that they were negative for COVID-19, okay? Like seven, over seven day period, okay? Uh, before entering any of the ports such as Shenzhen and Zhuhai ports. And this seven day period was then became more and more stricter and it decreased to three days. And, it's, and logistically, it's very difficult for for these for these drivers to get the, the test and it also delayed the supply chain. Okay, so it delayed the movement of of the food. Okay, from across the border into Hong Kong. So with COVID nineteen, it disrupted the logistics service greatly. Okay, so we got transportation. Okay, through the land. Okay, cross border, and also through sea. Okay, and, and ships, and also in the air. So in this picture here, you can see that a lot of the, the airplanes okay, were grounded because a, because a lot of fruit suppliers, like fruit supplies such as um, like plum, strawberries, um, grapes coming from, from Europe, from New Zealand, from Australia. So a lot of these were, were disrupted. Okay? So, so a lot of these planes were then grounded. So with COVID-19, it also affected the, the labor, okay, because, because the workers, so the workers were affected by COVID-19, okay, they, they are not allowed to go to work, okay, and, and the people who may become in contact with the infected persons, they had to undergo very strict quarantine regulations, okay, so this reduced the labor force greatly, okay, so this is impact on a whole whole um, food supply chain, okay? Okay, so really exacerbated, um, okay, the food insecurity, okay? Okay, so, so what is the food security, okay? So when we talk about food security, it means that food is available for all people, anytime that you need the food, the food is nutritious, it's, it's uh, quality food, Okay, so it's safe to eat. So that's what food security means, that you're able to access the food, okay? And, and when, and different, well, all places we have a food system, okay? So, so food system refers to all the elements about how the food is produced, um, the how it manufactured, how it's distributed and processed, and how it's sent to the consumers and also looks at the resource and waste recovery component. So this is the, the food system, okay? So in Hong Kong, we have our food is coming, well, a lot of it's coming from overseas. So therefore, 
we rely heavily on distribution, okay? distribution from other places. Okay? Whereas if, if you're, where you live is very self-sufficient, you grow your own food, then this food, then the food system can okay, maybe the logistics may be easier okay, to, to handle because the food is already grown in the city and there's not a lot of transport miles okay, from the food to the consumer. Okay, so, so this is the so this is the food system. Okay. So food security is, is a very big issue. Um, if you never thought about it before, I want you to think about how the pandemic has affected our food security. Okay, so the food security has four pillars. Okay, so this is the food availability. Okay, so whether food is available, it's reliable, it's consistent. Okay, you don't have to worry about there's any food shortage. Okay, so food access, can you get the food? Which means that that the price range is not so expensive that you can't afford it. Okay, so this is, means you can access the food. And then utilization. Okay, so that means that the people that you have the knowledge of basic sanitary conditions to, to prepare the food, okay, and that the food, food is nutrition, okay, it can provide good nutrients for you, okay. And then the food supply can should be stable, okay, so that it is continuously available okay, to, to the people. Okay. But now there are, are great impacts on on food security. Okay, so one of them is the pandemic. Okay. okay, so let's look here. So this is for Hong Kong's supply, the food supply. So if you look at this table, okay, basically we, we, we are not very um, self-sufficient, okay? Because, so, so say for vegetables, we consume about 2,300 tons per day Okay, but we only produce less than 2%. Okay, so 1.8% so of the vegetables are grown in Hong Kong. Okay, so rice, we import it. So, so meat products, okay, so meat produce, our local production is also very low. So we, we rely heavily um, on, on imports. Okay, so 80% of our food is coming from China. Uh, we got 8% from Thailand, 7% is imported from US um, and other places like, like the Philippines. Okay, so this is different types of food. Okay, so, so in terms of uh, self-sufficiency, we are very vulnerable, okay? Because we rely so heavily on the imports. Okay? So what happens if there's uh, any like lag in the imports from elsewhere? Okay, so what's what's going to happen? That means any food that we get, okay, the price is going to be, be skyrocket. Okay, so Hong Kong imports ninety percent of its food. It's listed among the world's most vulnerable. Okay, okay, and in terms of um, say in terms of our carbon footprint, we're not doing very well because we because we import a lot of our food from from elsewhere, our food miles, okay, is very long. Okay, so when we take the plane or the um, other modes of transportation, okay, we use lots of fuel, it contributes heavily to, to the carbon footprint, okay. Okay, so besides the pandemic, another challenge that poses to our food security is the weather, okay, in particular climate change. So do you remember back in 2018, we had this um, so very serious this typhoon. So the super, it's a super typhoon, Mangrove. So this was back in 2018, okay? So we, we had lots of sea surge. Um, there was water, still water going into the Hanghachian area, into the parking lots, and it destroyed, right? Um, around the, the sea coast, okay? So, so we never really had something like this before, but because of climate change, this is something that we can expect, okay? So, so not only does it cause damage to our property, but how about to our food, okay? So here, these are some news, some news articles, okay? So, 
So say in Thailand, okay, we must say what the onslaught of climate change, when it gets very dry, we're not able to grow our crops. Okay, so there's less produce. So what happens if we have flooding? So heavy, heavy rain. So this will also impact, okay, impact the, the, the supplies of vegetables um, and, and other produce. Okay, so this will, will cause the, an increase in the food prices. Okay, so we see climate change impacts okay, the food security. Okay, so on a very large, large region, like global, regional, so global is worldwide, regional is say over a, a country and local levels are smaller areas like cities. Okay, so climate change is, is something very real. It's causing increased temperatures in some places, but it also cause extreme weather events. So some places will be more hotter, some will be even more colder, okay? And also be, we expect to be increased rainfall intensity, okay? So this will, will lead to, you know, say, flooding, okay? flooding of our, of our farmland, okay? okay there could also be reduction in water availability, okay? So there's, there's lots of consequences of, of climate change. So these are some of them, okay? Such as land degradation, Okay, reduce agricultural productivity. Okay, so the food, the food prices will, will hike up. Then it can also lead to food spoilage, okay, whereas the food has gone bad, so we can't eat it. And then it's also disrupt the food distribution and transport. Okay. Okay, so the foods, our food systems are under pressure from climate change. Okay. And there has there are some data, okay. Well, this is from modeling. Okay, so, so, so computer model says that there will be, they estimate there could be a decrease in the yield range of crops. Okay, so this is further down the road, say 2090 to 2100. Okay, so it can destroy a lot of our crops. Okay, so decrease by 50 to 100%. Okay, so the soil quality will, will change. Okay, um, there'll be high soil salinity. So basically the soil will be deficient. So another thing that we need to worry about food security is our food safety, okay? So one of the pillars of, of the food security is that the food must be nutritious and it must be safe, okay? okay. And these are some, um, um, some news, okay? Some news over the past years. Okay? So there's been a study done, done by our own Hong Kong Organic Resource Center which found that some vegetables okay, have been contaminated with, with heavy metals and pesticides. Okay, okay so it's very big, it's, we have to be careful what we what we eat. Okay, we have to wash vegetables well. Okay, so so they are contaminated with different things and some foods which are imported to Hong Kong by air, they they come in in without any safety do documents. Okay. okay. Okay, so, so the climate change affects the food system, but do you know that the food system also impacts climate change? Okay, so how we grow our food is also very important. Okay, so the food system okay, contributes 25 to 30 percent of the global greenhouse gas emissions. For example, if the food miles is very long, okay, so if you're importing foods from very far places, um, you need lots of you know, fuel, so this will contribute to carbon dioxide. So this will, so when you have carbon carbon into the air, so this will increase, well, it also will have an adverse effect on climate change, okay? So other things, so we're, we're cutting down forests, okay? So we're cutting down forests in order to create land. Okay? So this will also will cause um, degradation of the soil. Okay, so, so there's many different different impacts caused by, and this is basically from conventional, okay, conventional um, growing of, of, of all vegetables. Okay, so now let's look at biodiversity and also bioresources. Okay, so what is a bioresource? Okay, so bioresource, so they include all these things, so they are, um, 
I saw something that uh, is they are a genetic resource, so there's some sort of organism or a part of, such as animals, plants, like trees, um, say mushrooms. So these are all, <coughs> so these are all our bio resources. <coughs> so bio resources, okay, also depend on biodiversity. If we protect our bio biodiversity, okay, then we can also increase our bio resource because bio resource so it's provide advantages to, to people for our human, for our well-being. Okay. So these are some examples of some bio resources. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so such as okay, so the soil, okay, soil allows us to grow trees. Okay. So the trees are bio resources. So this bamboo is a bio resource. Okay. So the soil itself is a natural resource, but what it can provide to us. Okay, these are bio resources, like such as the, such as the, um, the oceans, right? So the ocean is a natural resource, but because we have all these different types of fish, okay, um, so crustaceans, all these fish, so so these are bio resources. Okay? okay, so so potatoes, grains, these are bio resources coming from this from the soil. Okay, okay so. So bio resource is very important because that's where we obtain a lot of our, our food from and our timber for our housing. Okay? So there's, a, there's an index called the Global Living Planet Index and it shows that there's been a decline of 58% okay, of all these biodiversity over this period from 1970 to 2012. So what this means is that a lot of our animals have died. Okay? Like for example, if we use a lot of water, okay, um, um, say from the from the ponds, okay, um, uh, it can cause a, it can cause a decrease in the, the numbers of elephants okay, because elephants take a lot of water. So lots of so to, to, uh, terrestrial animals biodiversity has decreased by thirty eight percent. Okay, so these numbers, even for freshwater animals, so decrease by eighty one percent. So these two are very high numbers. Okay, so we have to protect, we have to protect our animals, protect our biodiversity. Okay, so if you're familiar with um, with our footprint, okay, so so we are using a lot of our resources. Okay, we're using them much faster than the Earth can replenish. Okay, so so our Earth can only support about two billion people, but we're using it like as if we have have some, but we have 7.2 billion people on the Earth. Okay, so the Earth needs 1.6 years to produce enough resources to meet our needs. Okay, so we can take a look at the ecological footprint for Hong Kong. Okay, so how many planets does it take to support Hong Kong's lifestyle? Okay, can you guess? Okay, so how many? So it's 4.2 Earths. Okay. And our, our ecological footprint is very high. It's second in Asia, and it ranks 10 okay, around the world. Okay, so, so in Hong Kong, before we were very much a buy, okay, we purchased lots of things, so very much a low waste society. Okay? Um, for example, buying, buying lots of clothes or buying products with lots of packaging. Okay? So, so we have to be aware about how we how we live our material, how we live our life, okay? Okay, so what is sustainable development? Okay, I think you're familiar with this. So this is um, a very common term that you, you may have heard. Okay, so this definition came out in 1987. So according to World Commission on Environmental, on Environment and Development. So, so sustainable development is development that meets not only the needs of the present, okay, the present generation, but we also have to take care about the future. Okay? We have to leave the earth, okay? leave the resources for our future generation, such as for your for your children, your grandchildren, and so forth. Okay? So aligned with sustainable development, okay, there are global initiatives, okay, and this is called a 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Okay, so these are global initiatives. And there are 17 sustainable development goals, okay? And uh, 
for which we schools that I also have targets. So this sustainable development goals is a blueprint about how we can and um, how we can achieve a much better, more sustainable future. Okay, so everything that we do, it, uh, everything that the countries do, they should try to abide by these goals. Okay, so so they address these global challenges, which are related to poverty, inequality, like food security, climate change. Okay, okay so these are the 17 sustainable development goals and we're gonna to try to meet them by the year 2030, okay? Okay, so, so they start in 2016, so we have a 15 year timeline to try to meet them. Okay, so of, all, of these, um, of these um, um, 17 goals, you see the ones in red. So these, so in red, so these are, are related to, um, to food security and also bioresource resource management, okay? So zero hunger. Um, protecting the, uh, life, the life on land, like the plants, protecting the life below the water. Okay. Okay, so, so how can we grow our crops in a more sustainable manner? Okay. So, so by practicing sustainable agriculture, this is a step towards sustainability. Okay, so we can solve the challenges of food security and food safety, okay, by increasing the, um, by growing the foods locally, okay? we can conserve the our environment, okay? such as using less chemicals like pesticides, less fertilizers, we use more natural natural fertilizers. Okay? We can also use use technology to help. Okay, to help to um, so this is. So artificial intelligence like robotics or so University of Lincoln, they, they have this contraption okay, where it can harvest. So it can harvest um, fruits such as strawberries. So it can do it much faster than, than humans can. So, so the faster you harvest, it can also prolong the shelf life of the vegetable. So we must have better use of our land resources and our resources. Okay? And we think about food, um, so think about what type of food you eat. So do you like to eat meat, like hamburgers, or do you eat lots of vegetables? So we need to cater for a more healthy and more sustainable diet. Okay. So if you like to eat meat, okay, like so, so here's an example of you. So if you eat meat, so say one kilogram of beef, okay. So if you like to eat steak, it actually uses a lot of resources, okay, okay because you, because for meat, okay. You know, coming from cows, you got to you got to water the, the grains, okay, which are which are the food for the cows. Okay, you got to service the cow, so wash the cow. The cow needs to drink the water. Okay, so so actually for one kilogram of beef, it requires over fifteen thousand liters of water. Okay, so a lot of resources which have been used. Okay, so this is water footprint. So here's the beef. Okay. But if you go vegan, okay, become vegetarian, and you eat more vegetables, then you can see that the the water usage is much, much, much smaller. Okay, so this is more sustainable. Okay? And now, now if you go to the supermarket, so I saw this recently at the supermarket. There, if you if you want to give up beef, but you're not sure because you like this taste of it. There are products out there which taste like beef, look like beef, but they're made of, of other things like soybean. Okay. So this is is something so this is the product, some food product that you may consider. Okay. Okay, so so there's more more of these products in the market. Okay. Okay, so so we have to grow our crops in a more sustainable manner. Okay. Um, so we grow it locally, and this will help to protect our, our food, okay, or increase our self-sufficiency of food. Okay, so there's different ways that we can grow our crops, okay. We can do it to practice organic farming, okay. We can grow them in greenhouse. We can also grow our crops in a soilless medium, so we use to put them in the water for nutrients, okay. And we can grow them indoors, okay, so we can 
we can control the environment better. Okay? So, there's, so there's lots of uh, different ways in which we can grow our crops. Okay? So here are some, okay, so we can grow them outdoors. We can also have like say rooftop farming. Okay, we can grow them like outdoors, indoors, okay? And that the farmland is going to be very large. Okay, so this is, so, so, um, <coughs> so organic agriculture is very important. Okay? It can help protect the environment. And it also has an economic role, okay, because by, by providing fresh vegetables, a good supply, healthy supply, then we can keep the, we can also keep the, the price of these vegetables down. Okay? And also uh, people like to, to farm because for exercise, um, it's recreational. Okay? Okay. So, so in Hong Kong, we have, we have a lot of different um, um, policies in place, okay, which push towards, towards organic agriculture. One of this is the planning for agriculture uses. And this is Sustainability Hong Kong 2030 plus, okay? And also the government in 2016 introduced this policy. So this is new agriculture policy. And this also promotes the modernization of sustainable development, okay? And uh, also promotes in particular organic agriculture. Okay. So what's in this policy address? Some major measures is established uh, this 80 hectare agricultural park, okay, so, so for the farmers to use, they'll also optimize, also introduce a $500 million sustainable agriculture development fund, okay, to also to promote, promote um, agricultural, to promote organic farming, and also to provide assistance to farmers. Um, so basically, we want to strengthen the support of, um, for the agriculture sector to help the farmers in order to brand, help with the marketing branding of their products. Okay, so, so these are some, another initiative with regards to protecting our biodiversity. So this is, so this is the 2016 to 2021 plan to promote sustainable agriculture, okay? Okay, so, so through this um, talk, I hope that your awareness have been raised about the problems Posed by the pandemic, by climate change, by by contamination of, of food, okay, and how we must live a more sustainable lifestyle, okay, okay. So, so we have policies in place. Okay, um, so you can increase your knowledge. We also have uh, it's important to to educate yourself, okay, okay. So, so. So the last thing I want to introduce to you is about a program. So we have a new program which is introduced in 2019. And this is the BSD in Bioresource and Agriculture Science. Okay. And this is the first um, professional multidisciplinary degree program in Hong Kong. Okay. So this program aligns with the new agriculture policy. We this program has received full support from AFCD. So, so this is a picture of our head of the department, Professor Johnson Wong, together with the former director of AFCD, so Mr. Alan Wong, and also Mr. Peter Young from Capital Green. Okay, so this was some, some introduction of our new program okay, in the news. So our program is endorsed by AFCD. Okay? And people, students who take the course, doesn't mean that they're going to become farmers. So there's lots of different types of job opportunities. Okay. So let me talk about some special features for the program. So students will take an internship. So this is compulsory. Students will also receive basic farm training at the AFC, AFCD Experimental Station. So this is located in Shanghai. Because uh, HKBU, although we have a rooftop farm, but we don't have a big you know, piece of farm land. Okay. And then so students will also receive training. Okay. To, to, to get their organic inspector certification course, okay? So which is um, a course by the International Organic Inspectors Association. So by taking this course, the students can do auditing of organic farms okay, worldwide. 
Okay, so this is the curriculum, so the four-year study. So we have the summer internship here, and also the organic certification inspectors training. So there's so students will gain lots of experience working with soil, understanding the science of soil and fertility. They'll learn about plant diseases, um, also urban horticulture, and also farm management, and, and, and also learn about starting up a business, an agribusiness. Okay? So this is the, the summer internship. So all students in program will take part in this. They're required to take 180 hours minimum and students will join the summer internship in the, in the summer of year two. And these are some of, of the organizations which, which are providing internships for our students. So right now our students, our students in year two have, are on the internship um, program now. So this is the career prospects. Okay. Students can, be, can go into agribusiness. So this may have to be a farmer. There's lots of things, um, lots of opportunities. Um, so they can also procure food for the supermarkets or pro procure food for, for restaurants. They can also work as environmental consultant, work um, in the government, such as with AFCD. So, so, if they work for, so if they work for AFCD, the student can become a field officer. Okay? But if the student be, goes on to continue master's or PhD, then they become an agricultural officer, which is in the same um, rank as an administrative officer. Okay? And also lots of green groups are looking for, for, for students okay, with knowledge about bioresource management and sustainable agriculture. So we also offer a lot of scholarships to our year two students. Okay, so these are some of them. So ranges from 5,000, 10,000, AFCD also has some, range up to 35,000, okay? So if you want to learn more about our program, you can take a look at our HKBU Facebook. You can look at YouTube, okay? Um, there's an introduction about our program. So, and of course you can always contact us to add at our Department of Biology. Okay, so this is the, so remember we need to live sustainable, sustainable, sustainable okay, and by doing this, we can, um, we can have, um, we can protect our environment.